Welcome back to the channel and in this video, which is the first video in a two part series of videos where I'm going to walk you through building out a real life automation, a webinar reminder sequence using the watertight automation framework. I'm Jason Resnick of NurtureKit, NurtureKit.co and starting with the end in mind when it comes to anything is usually a good rule of thumb except when you're building out any piece of automation. Most will load up ConvertKit, hop into the visual automation, the blank screen, and just start laying out those nodes. That's not the approach that you want to take. When you do this, you're going to find yourself in a scenario where you're going to want to move things around and the ConvertKit UI just doesn't allow for that. And you might feel stuck and feel like you've just got to start over from scratch and that just sucks or that you're going to build this whole thing out and start to see people go through it and then realize that people are landing in spots where you don't want them to land and then you wind up with a big bowl of spaghetti where do you start well I start with the watertight automation framework which is nine questions and if you take the five maybe ten minutes to answer these questions, and I'm going to show you how fast we can go through this here, you're going to save yourself a ton of time and a ton of headaches when your subscribers start going through your automations. So today we're going to use the watertight automation framework, which you can find a link to getting this yourself so that you can use it in a link below to build out a webinar reminder sequence. Now, these are the emails that you should be sending out once somebody signs up to your webinar, your live event, your live Q and A, whatever it is, when somebody registers for something, you want them to show up to it. That's the point. Some platforms allow you to do this and yes, that's awesome and they should, but it's not on brand. Most times you're limited in when they can be sent. It doesn't look like your emails and so your subscribers and your registrants who get this email may not trust it or they may not even read it. This will actually give you the freedom and flexibility to stay on brand and engage with your subscribers at a much deeper level. So let's head on in and work through this. The first question that you're going to ask yourself is what is the purpose of this automation? Where does it where does it sit in the subscriber's journey? So in this case, we are going to say uh, they have just signed up for the webinar and the goal is to get them to attend the webinar. Now, where do they sit? Um, they shouldn't be a customer yet, right? That's kind of what the goal of any live event is, is really to get an offer in front of them in some form or fashion. So who needs to go through this? Anyone who registers, right? That's pretty much it. Um, what's the primary outcome to get them to attend live. Now, see, some of these things may seem repetitive. However, as you use this framework with any automations, your answers may be different among this, right? So there might be, in this case, what's the alternate outcome? In this case, well, they don't show up, right? They don't show up live. It could be that they buy the product. They buy the product before coming, right? There are all, all of these sort of things that you want to think about that could affect whether or not they get these emails or what it goes inside of those emails. Are there cases where someone shouldn't go through this? Who, what, and if they get in there, what sort of questions can we ask someone to filter them. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to ask them anything. It's just what sort of logic are we going to build into this? So first thing we want to do is buyers. 
right? Um, buyers who signed up. What's, what do we want to do if they get in there? Um, after, I mean, well, we don't mind them allowing them into the webinar, right? <laughs> Allow them in, but we don't want to promote later, right? So we don't want to promote post webinar. Um, are there cases where someone shouldn't go through this? Maybe registrants who sign up close to the event time and date. And then what happens? Right? Maybe we wanna create a filter for that. Uh, so let's just say that we know the webinar platform on the day of and the day before, send out emails. So maybe we only wanna send one email, right? So let's just say within two days of them signing up, don't send, don't send the full sequence, okay? Number six, what are the tags, custom field sequences needed? So let's talk about tags first, right? It's going to be the driver tag, which I've talked about in a previous video, which you'll find a link on. Let's just say, webinar, the program, um, and then I always like to use dates when it comes to this. So let's just say July of 2021, right? Let's say we run this multiple times. That's why I encourage people to use the naming convention, which I created another video on, and create meta information on the back of a tag, especially the driver tags. Now, custom fields, um, we probably want, if we have multiple, multiple webinars and we run this pretty frequently, we want to just know what they came from. The, the important thing is the last one, right? So we'll create a custom field, the latest webinar referral, right? Where did they come from? Facebook, uh, our website pop-up, maybe an ad, you know, these options, right? I'm not sure, but that's not really something we have to worry about. We just want to account for it. Now, the other thing is maybe we want to track how many times they come to our webinars, right? Um, because if they come multiple times and they don't buy, it might be an opportunity to reach out to them and figure out why. Then finally, what's the, is there any more? I don't think so, but we certainly know what sequence that we want to send out, and that's the reminder sequence, right? Um, which this is four emails over five days, let's just say. And then we have another sequence that really is just one email, and that could be for those people that sign up pretty close to the event. What are the conversion points? Now, this one, there's really no conversion point. They're showing up or they're not. So they're really just completing the automation. Now, if this is a pitch automation or sales pitch, if this is a sales pitch, there might be multiple types of conversion points. It could be that they didn't buy. It could be that they bought. What tier did they buy? And so on and so forth. So you want to know what those look like. If someone is going through this, uh, should they receive, should they not receive or go through something else? So this is what we were talking about before is that buyers shouldn't receive the post webinar pitch. Now is this, what's the timing of the full automation? Now you might think that it's just the five days for the sequence, right? In this case, it's probably it there might be a delay until a specific date though, right? So if somebody registers for this two weeks in advance, if our sequence is only five days, we wanna know what this looks like. And the reason why you wanna account for this is just so that if anybody wants to understand these sort of automations that come in after they've built and they don't understand your business, they haven't played in English right through here, to be able to go ahead and do that. 
And then should there be a delay before starting or leaving? Um, potential delay at the beginning, right? Because if it's a five day se reminder sequence, uh, you know, we might not, you know, we want to account for that. But leaving, we're pretty much going to send an email an hour before, maybe even 15 minutes before the event. So they're just going to fall out the bottom. There's no delay at the bottom. And that's it. Now we have this and it's just plain English. And so when we go into ConvertKit into the visual automation and start to build out what this looks like, it's easy enough because we just have everything that we want to be accounted for. The logic is already there. And in the next video, you're going to see how I use this alongside when I build out the visual automation. If this video was helpful, smash that like button and click that subscribe button and bell icon if you're not already subscribed to the channel so that you get notified the next time a new video drops. When you treat your email list like humans, amazing transformations happen.